Hello and welcome to this video about a Mark Levinson number 39 CD processor. Uh, me and Mark Levinson do not like each other, you know. They just don't do things a uh, normal way and they're even more quirky than French and English uh, designers. Uh, we'll get into the mechanism uh, in a moment. Let me tell you a few things about um, uh, the electronics. Uh, in here we have a server board with a lot of memory and programmable stuff and, and even the, the travel of the drawer has to be programmed. Transformers encased, um, a lot of regulators, there's some good power protection there but the regulators, this, this I think is a clear winner in the regulator wars because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we have a couple more there, 10, 11, and then eight more at the back. So altogether we have 19 regulators that I can see. I haven't had the chance to take that board out. Maybe it's something underneath there. That's really hot. Um, the duct chip it uses are very good, if not the best. They are Burr Brown PCM1702 uh, resistor ladder ducts, four of them. But also, also it has a Burr Brown DAC 7800, two of those. So I have no idea why it uses them. I don't know, some kind of um, additional signal shaping or whatnot. That's above my pay grade and there's no information about this player anywhere so uh, it's be very hard to, to actually work on it um, somebody already did and it was a semi-professional I mean he was professional enough to fix it and you can see there's some meltdowns going on in capacitors and these capacitors a bit worse for wear that uh, DAC chip has been replaced but obviously he was a professional because he fixed it and when I say semi it's because he lost some screws and <laughs> when I see when mounting screws are all different all four of them that, that um, uh, takes away a bit from um, being a, a full pro so um, two things wrong with it we have no audio and we're listening now through um, ASEBU output to my um, benchmark DAC over there and um, so that is still to be done and what I've done is I've um, I fixed the uh, uh, the draw issue and what the process it was hours and hours firstly I, I fixed that puck because the, the puck was really going all over the place and, and it was all wobbly um, but let me show you what we have got here as far as um, uh, mechanism. Before I go, this is HDCD player, so there's somewhere an HDCD chip underneath and uh, probably underneath that. Or maybe on the other side of that board, I have no idea. So, um, the draw now is uh, reasonably nice and smooth and fast. And as you see, this is just a sheet of metal that uh, that draw. Uh, and if you ever want to work on this, you know, you think, ah, it's easy to replace that belt. Well, no, it isn't, because it's easy to take one off. You can cut it, but to put one back on, not so easy. Uh, the whole thing, the whole thing is very simple. You have a pivot here. And once the, the drawer comes in, that roller there engages there and just brings the, brings the whole mechanism up to the bridge. It's like VRDS in TX, you know, it's just solid aluminium bridge, and, but the pack is somehow smaller. So um, I've done a lot of things, you know, I took it all apart. To take it apart, there are four screws, easily accessible, no problem there. Um, 
if you want to work on it, get it out and then just um, you have to punch out that rod that way to be able to get the, the new belt on. Um, good time to lubricate those rails, you see two rails just like in KSS uh, 190. Um, but I, I've done a lot of other things and of course um, before I worked out that this is the simplest and easiest way to do. But I was um, wasting my time doing all sorts of things. I mean, there, there, there is the quirky things, you know, like this is all sort of spring-loaded and... Uh, it does not use micro-switches, limit switches. There are optical uh, sensors here and the tray has I don't know whether you'd be able to see it or not. The tray you see has a, like a bands painted on it underneath. So um, it must be reading them. And of course, once I finish, it worked once and then wouldn't work at all. And just was doing strange things. Wasn't going to go in or out. So I've, I've read some article on the net that you have to um, calibrate it. And calibration is done by turning it off keeping the eject button uh, depressed and turning it back on until the uh, display shows calibration and when it does and when it does uh, you let the button go and the tray goes in and out a couple of times and then it works I originally you know was swapping those sensors you know perhaps I've done them wrong and but it doesn't matter which way they go it just doesn't matter the the software will work it out and, and train and then obviously at first I had those things be very careful in removing them there is a uh, there is a little catch there that you have to depress from that side and pull it out and of course uh, the socket sort of came up and didn't make good connection and it was all going haywire but all things all, all, all well that uh, ends well the belt is not that bad, but, but still needed to be replaced. It, it, it didn't work. Um, that's about all for now. There is uh, uh, nothing really uh, more to say. Um, uh, there was something else, but I think I forgot it. What was good about it is that the other belt, the, the drive belt, as you see, is um, ribbed. So that doesn't need replacement that works um, very well um, it has an error when 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 it gets powered up and let me do the the draw it, it reads very well it reads um, uh, everything on my test disk you know even to three millimeters with painted dot not as much with interruption data layer read CDRs not all but but most but it has a um, error and if anybody knows what it is please let me know i'll show you what it is when you turn it off on the first boot i think it's error e990 have a look at that sorry code 990e okay if anybody knows what that is uh, please let me know well thank you very much and till the next one bye bye